What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and unsurprisingly, Ubisoft have updated the performance of the muzzle brake. As it turns out, it was actually not supposed to be the best choice in every situation for every gun. So we know that this patch has changed the performance of the muzzle brake, but the in-game text description and recall pattern remain the same. With that, we now not only have a discrepancy between the text and the recall pattern, but also with its performance. That once again throws up the questions of how the muzzle brake compares to the other muzzle adapters, and even how it compares to its pre-patch self. When faced with questions like this, there's only one valid course of action. To the bank lab! As before, I'll be standing in my special little spot to make sure that I'm always firing at exactly the same distance and exactly the same angle. The distance I'll be firing at is 21 meters, or about the length of a fully grown North Pacific right whale. This time, I'll be conducting three different tests. First off, I'll be going back to the Para 308 to check how the muzzle brake's performance has been changed and how it stacks up now against the competition. After that, I'll be testing the muzzle brake's performance for semi-automatic weapons. First for pistols, and then for semi-automatic rifles. On to experiment number one, and here is a quick view of what the tests looked like. As in my last video, I will be creating my own recoil patterns, focusing on the first five shots of each burst, and let's start off by comparing the results of the muzzle brake pre and post patch. According to the post by Ubisoft, the muzzle brake was intended to provide good first round recoil mitigation. And as we can see, with five out of the seven bursts I fired, I still achieved a very good grouping for the second shot that landed. But that's where the similarities between the old version of the muzzle brake and the new one end. In two of my bursts, the second round kind of went astray a little bit, which we didn't see before. And in addition to that, we can see that the groups are definitely opening up and rising somewhat, indicating greater muzzle climb. So the muzzle brake is not quite as great as it used to be, but let's compare it to the results for the other muzzle adapters. As we can see here, in terms of recoil management, having no adapter, the suppressor or the extended barrel gives you no advantage, so those three are out of the running. When comparing the flash hider, compensator and muzzle brake, you can actually now see that the compensator does somewhat look like a hybrid of the flash hider and compensator just as it was intended. While the compensator seems to produce better groupings for longer bursts, the flash hider has less muzzle climb. The muzzle brake seems to have sort of a similar muzzle climb to the flash hider, but certainly early on in the burst has the smaller, more consistent grouping of the compensator. So it seems that Ubisoft with this patch have achieved their goal. The muzzle brake is now great if you're going to be firing short two or three round bursts, while for longer bursts, the compensator is definitely better. I would still say that the muzzle brake isn't really a compromise between flash hider and compensator, simply because the muzzle brake seems to replace the flash hider. If your play style involves short controlled bursts, the muzzle brake is a better choice than the flash hider. If you're going to be firing long bursts in your game, go with the compensator. And now over to experiments number two and three, testing the muzzle brake for semi-automatic weapons. First up, the pistol. I specifically chose the GSH here since it also has the capability of using the compensator which allows us to compare the two. Now with the semi-automatic weapons, since I don't have the exact same control from burst to burst as I would with a fully automatic weapon, I'm going to use a slightly different approach to evaluate the results. So rather than the five shot analysis I used for the fully automatic weapons, with the semi-autos I'll simply throw a load of lead at the wall and see if that yields any useful results. So let's see what we've ended up with. When you compare no adapter at all to the compensator, you can see maybe a slightly larger spread when you don't have an adapter, but the difference looks almost negligible. But compare that to the muzzle brake and we can see a very significant difference. The muzzle brake seems to have very effectively countered any recoil and has created a very tight group just above the initial aim point. 
Unless I'm using a suppressor on my pistol, I definitely know which muzzle attachment I'll be going with, if it's available. And for my final test, I'll be using the Heckler & Koch 417 to check out how effective the muzzle brake is for semi-automatic rifles. Once again, the method is liberally apply lead to wall until meaningful pattern emerges. And here are the results. Now once again we can immediately see that the compensator does not really add any benefit in terms of recoil management, and if we think about it, that makes sense. The compensator is supposed to help you for long fully automatic bursts, but with a semi-automatic weapon each and every shot is counted individually. So it should really be no surprise that the compensator, both for pistols and for semi-automatic rifles, is fairly useless. The flash hider, on the other hand, is intended for short bursts and it makes complete and utter sense that it would give a benefit to a semi-automatic rifle like the 417. But as we've seen before, the muzzle brake trumps the flash hider every time and that also goes for semi-automatic rifles. Again, this shouldn't really be surprising since Ubisoft announced that the new muzzle brake will be providing first shot recoil reduction. And with a semi-automatic weapon? Every shot is the first shot. So to the final conclusion. Yes, the muzzle brake has suffered a bit of a nerf. It was never meant to be as good as it was when it was released. So when it comes to controlling fully automatic weapons, I think the muzzle brake is still a very viable option, especially if your playstyle is mostly focused on short controlled bursts. But if you're using a semi-automatic weapon, pistol or rifle, in terms of recoil control, the muzzle brake should always be your number one choice. If you found this video useful and or entertaining, and you know someone who plays the game and who might be interested in the insights as well, send them a link. I'm really grateful for all the viewer support and input I've had up until now. I really couldn't be doing this without you. And speaking of sharing a link to great YouTube channels covering Rainbow Six, many of you will undoubtedly already know him, but for those of you who don't, I can only recommend you check out Icy Cat's channel. In my opinion, Icy Cat's channel is the number one source for any news or developments going on in Rainbow Six, and his in-depth looks at weapons, gadgets, and playable characters offer really great and useful insights. So if you're into Rainbow Six and you don't know Icy Cat yet, click the link on screen or in the description now to head on over and check him out. And that's it for today guys, as always I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.